the privilege to uh, talk with Brent and Virginia Earwicker and uh, their children as best as they'll allow us to talk with them. And uh, Brent and Virginia are missionaries in Uganda. And as they come, would you guys just give them a hand? And... Hi, you guys. Hi, Emily. Come hold my hand, Emily. This is how it looked like in the airport for uh, 20 hours uh, as I came back with them from my trip to Uganda. Just let the, earlier this week, I got to hold, I was in charge of Emily in the airport. And so literally this is how it looked all the way through. It was the best trip home I've ever had. <laughs> and Aiden would come to me, the little two-year-old over there, he wouldn't come to me at all in the airplane or anything. And he's getting a little feisty even right now. <laughs> I like Aiden. Aiden's awesome. And Josiah, hey Josiah, can you wave up from down there? Can you wave? And he's like, no way. I'm not getting in front of all of these people. No how. I know the feeling. I know the feeling. Uh, well, it's such a privilege, you guys, to have you here. Um, obviously, uh, just the years, eight years that we've supported you in Uganda. And when we were, when I was there, um, but my first time four years ago, and then Pastor Ken and I went two years ago, we've met, each time we've met pastors and leaders on the islands of Lake Victoria, which is Brent and Virginia's primary ministry there, and, and to see what God is doing to expand his kingdom in the lives of pastors and churches that many, many people have forgotten. I mean, most of the island pastors are very disconnected and isolated, and Brent has come in Virginia and come alongside them and has created this network Island Leadership Network, it's called, and uh, two years ago, it was amazing, but this last trip, the growth, Brent, has been incredible. Talk to us about what God has done just in the last two years in the uh, Island Leadership Network. Yeah, the work has really grown beyond us and too big for us. There's more than 30 inhabited islands and uh, about 120 churches that we're trying to gather together. Uh, they're leaders, and uh, so we, we decided to multiply ourselves into uh, regional leaders out there on the islands. These are pastors that we personally trained in a pastor's school um, some years back. And so in each of six regions on the lake, we have one of those leaders. And um, it's been neat to see that work be multiplied. What we would be normally out there doing church to church, they're now doing. And uh, then we have a monthly meeting, either a pastor's conference or an evangelistic uh, crusade that we do. Um, so we're still out there regularly. Um, but it's neat just to see how the work has really multiplied. And there's one pastor that we work very closely with that has really held this vision in his heart for the last 20 years, uh, Pastor Godfrey. And uh, it's neat because he's been praying, how can we do this vision? How can we get, bring the church together uh, in unity? And uh, so he, he has said to us that we're an answer to his prayers, and now we've been able to join together and uh, do what God's speaking. On yeah, and that's one of the... The neatest things for me as a, as a pastor is to be able to connect with other pastors, and Pastor Godfrey in particular, is just, our hearts are really connected. He told me, and this wasn't, you know, sometimes you wonder if what people say, and is it true or not, or are they just trying to get me to come back, you know, and this is just real genuine from Godfrey, and I felt the same as he looked right at me, and he said, I, I haven't stopped thinking about you the first time we met four years ago, and what's interesting is I have, it's the same for me. I, I wake up in the middle of the night thinking of Pastor Godfrey, so one day you guys will meet him, and just our hearts are connected with him, obviously with the Earwickers, and uh, certainly with the island ministry. Virginia, how's the family doing? <laughs> we know how Aiden's doing right now yes. as he runs out. Uh, yes. But how are, how's the family just generally doing? Uh, you guys have been over there for so long, and talk, talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, we've been doing good. Of course, I have my hands full with three kids living overseas, and homes, I've been homeschooling Josiah, so it's kind of a full-time job for me. Yeah. I try to give as much as I can to ministry, but... Definitely my full-time job is our kids and we're just loving it Just loving raising our kids over there and the cultural perspective that they are getting and uh, they also love the people so That's awesome. Just thank you so much. Yeah, we're so proud of what you guys are doing over there How can we be praying for you over these next few months? Yeah, specifically in the last um, week or so we've had quite a pushback from the enemy um, during our conference, we had three deaths, and two of our island pastors died. Uh, one of my regional leaders on our small team of seven passed away last week. And uh, we just really feel a, you know, the momentum is high, things are good, we're on track to take over a region with the gospel. And we just feel that, that pushback in this season. Um, and so, also had some robberies in our neighborhood right around our place in the last week. Uh, four people died in those robberies. So 
We just really ask for your prayers, not just for our protection, but for those people that we work with. And uh, yeah. really appreciate that. You know, we don't really understand it here in the U.S. This idea of darkness and you know dark forces against us is so Star Wars esque, but it's true. It actually is real. I mean, when you get off the plane in another country like in in, in Africa, you just have this sense: whoa, this is like nine day difference here. This is there is real darkness here, and there's pressing against us. And even for me, going over there, I I think the enemy didn't want me to go, and there was many things that happened. Matter of fact, uh, we went golfing. I, not really golfing. You can't really call it that, but it's like a jungle where they where they paved where they took some trees out. And so I'm I'm golfing. And so you might have seen this on my Facebook page, but um, I'm coming out finding one of Seth, our other missionary in Uganda's balls in the weeds because that's where he hits it most of the time. And so I grab I got it and I found it. And then I'm walking back to the path and there's this snake that's just right here. And it's just you can I just saw it moving and just kind of it was going away from me. So I wasn't afraid of it. It looked like a little gardener snake to be honest. I was like going away and I like so I'm like oh hey. Guys, there's a snake, and Brent and Seth come running over, and Josiah was with us, and he's like unfazed by snakes because they have them in their backyards. And they and and Seth, without without even like missing me, he's like, "Oh, that's a black mamba." <laughs> that's the reaction I was expecting. The other services never did that. What you guys just did. I'm so proud of you. Every other service was like totally unimpressed. It's a black mamba. I mean, it's a black mamba like right there. And so Seth and Brent went on, they, they became superheroes in my mind. Literally, I saw the capes come on as they pulled out the irons, one five iron and one six iron, <laughs> and proceeded to take, to slaughter this, this poor black mamba. <laughs> I didn't, after they told me what would have happened if I had gotten bit, I didn't feel badly for that snake at all. I mean, 40 minutes I would have been dead. I, I asked Brent, so Brent, walk me through it. What would have happened? Because I want to know the detail. What would happen if I had gotten bit and it started with a, a numbness in the leg and then it moved on to being stuck in traffic on the way to the hospital to get some antidote and it ended with them saying to me, Steve, you need to call your wife. That's when I got mad at Brent and I looked at him and said, what are we doing golfing on a course that has black mambas? And then he laughed and said, well, they're in my backyard too, so I go, okay, well, there, there you go. So we, need, we do need to cover this uh, missionary family often, as we need to cover all of our missionaries all over the uh, world. And so, um, hi, Emily. Do you want to say hi to everybody? Just say hi real quick. No, hi, Emily. <laughs> How long do you think Emily will just stay with her back to us? <laughs> All right, let's just pray for Virginia. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, we thank you for this couple, God, this entire family that have made a decision long ago to walk out their calling, your calling on their lives. And Jesus, with that calling comes a lot of responsibility, but there is some danger involved in it, real, real life danger. And Jesus, I just pray that you would protect this family. You would protect the pastors, the workers that, serve, that are around this family. Jesus, you would protect their house even right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, the things that the enemy would want to try to, to, to bring in destruction and that, Jesus, you would turn that around for good, that you would turn everything around for your kingdom's sake, for your glory, for these pastors, Jesus, that have a heart to reach the islands of Lake Victoria. Jesus, would you um, give us strategy and resources to know how to do that well and how to train up and release these pastors to reach uh, all of the islands of Lake Victoria and all the unreached people groups in that region. Jesus, give us wisdom and, uh, and strategy and uh, Jesus' protection and uh, power. Just give Brent and Virginia an anointing for this next season as, they, as, as many of the things that you put in their heart years ago are being rebirthed in a new fashion. And we thank you for that, Jesus. And we just lift this couple up to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can we just tell Brent and Virginia how much we love them? And <laughs> We're going to be out at the uh, uh, 